my prayer today, yeah. Praise the Lord, everyone. Welcome to another segment of It's Time for Restoration. Listen, I am your host, uh, Bishop Bobby T. Hutdahl. I'm happy uh, to be on the air with you today. Merry Christmas uh, to all of you out there. I pray that the Lord uh, continues to do wonderful things in your life, uh, not just Christmas time that we appreciate him, um, but all year long. I tell you, I'm excited. I'm excited for a wonderful new year that God has in store for me, and I am seeing signs of his glory. <laughs> As you can tell, I'm very excited and very thankful for the many things that God has done, is doing, and will continue to do. My God, by faith, I believe he will continue. Thank you for your letters. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Please pray for us as we go into this new year. Why don't you believe God with us uh, to stay on the air? Uh, I like to give it another year. Um, I tell you that young lady, Miss Whitley, uh, sending that letter and the gentleman, Jim, sending his love gift, I tell you, stirred me right on up. And uh, so I just feel like I, I don't wanna turn around. I don't wanna quit. I wanna hang in there. So. Uh, just pray that the Lord will continue to send the funds our way. And you still have a little bit of time. For those of you, uh, excuse me, that have businesses out there, um, those of you uh, who are looking to uh, have a write-off or you just want to sow a seed uh, and you've been watching this broadcast and you're like, you know what, I really am getting something out of this broadcast and, uh, and you want to share something to keep us on the air, we welcome it. No, it's not begging, but it's asking. <laughs> <laughs> and it's also receiving. It's also receiving as well. So uh, that's all I'm going to say to that. I don't want to belabor the point because i got a really good word that I want to share with you. Uh, we said we will continue to talk about Nehemiah and uh, getting you ready for what I believe. All of us have a mission. All of us have something to do for the Lord, and I want to get you ready for that. So let's have a quick word of prayer. I want to pray over your needs, and then I want to get right into the text. Father, I want to thank you for those who are watching me right now, those who are believing God with me. God, I thank you, God. Some woman is watching me right now. And God, she's believing in what I am saying. She's receiving your engrafted word. Oh God, as it's been expressed through this broadcast, and I ask you to bless her right now. Bless her right now. I want to say the lady's name is Tanya. Something, uh, a letter T uh, comes to mind. Tanya, uh, Tiffany, I don't know. But whoever you are, I want you to know God cares for you. And Father, we pray, Lord, that you will bless whoever's watching me right now as they receive the word of God with meekness. God bless those who are, again, behind the hospital walls, uh, in the hospital bed. Bless, Lord, people who are behind prison bars uh, in need of your love, in need of your care. Oh, God, anyone that's watching me, oh, God, and know, oh, God, that these uh, messages are are coming from the Lord. I pray that they receive it into their spirit. For all of these great things, we continue to give your name the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. First of all, um, it, because, um, of course, it is, um, by the time you watch this, the day before Christmas, um, it is Christmas Eve. And, uh, so, um, and uh, so why don't I give you a little uh, Christmas message, and then we'll go back over uh, to Nehemiah, and we'll deal with a little bit of that there. All right? Remember Matthew chapter uh, 1. And, and listen, guys. Listen, everybody. We got to know the reason for the season. All right? And it's not just to be talked about on this one particular day, um, but for all year long. Um, we, we need to be talking about the birth of Jesus Christ. And, uh, and I, I guarantee you, the Lord is not interested in us celebrating him with just gifts. He wants you to give the greatest gift of all, which is to celebrate him through his life by you living for him. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. I, I know God is not interested in Tonka toys and uh, Christmas trees and, and the kind of tangible gifts uh, uh, that we are interested in giving to one another. Uh, during this season, uh, God wants to give the ultimate gift. And then let me share uh, with you in um, um, 
uh, chapter number 1 and uh, verse number 18. So now the birth of Jesus Christ was as followed. After his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, <laughs> excuse me, being a just man and not wanting to make her a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thy son of David, do not be afraid to take to you Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. Wow. Look at what uh, the Lord has done by using and selecting Joseph and Mary uh, to be surrogates uh, and carriers of the Holy Spirit. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that wonderful? Uh, <clears throat> Joseph, sorry, he, he, didn't, he didn't have a direct play <laughs> into this, uh, a direct involvement uh, in this child being brought forth, but yet he was commanded to take on Mary so she would not look like to be ashamed before the people. And so in verse 21, he said, and this is the reason. And she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. That is the primary purpose why Jesus was conceived, born, and lived for us. And, of course, died. He was conceived, he was born, he lived, and he died for the purpose of saving you and I. Whew, my God, what an awesome message. You, you, you just can't add to that. You just can't take away from that. For God so loved the world, John 3, 16, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And we are so fortunate today. We are so fortunate today of how God is truly delivering us, truly healing us, and saving us from our many sins. And that's what Jesus came to do. So how did he come to do it? Did he come to, to uh, particularly deliver us from drugs, deliver us from alcohol? Well, he did that if we would just believe on him. If we would just believe on him, on the Son of God, that he came to save us, then yes, you will not be in these struggles that you're in. And today I invite you, I invite you to call upon the name of the Lord. Matthew, uh, 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 Romans, I'm sorry. Let's look at Romans. I believe it is chapter uh, 10. Romans chapter 10. And uh, let's, <clears throat> excuse me, let's look around the, uh, the ninth chapter, uh, he said, that if you confess with your, Romans 10 and 9, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. It's not hard to look for the point of salvation is believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. And today, let's, let's make Christmas what it's truly about. It's about him coming to save us. I am so sorry, but I must tell you the truth. It is not about toys. It is not about gifts. It is not about houses and land. It is not anything tangible. Jesus was born to save you and I from our sin so we may believe on him. And that's all it's mainly required. You know, it, it, it saddens me that we are doing so much to please one another. We're doing so much to give to one another. We are doing so much. And yet, we're not believing on Jesus Christ. I tell you today, it is not important to have all of these exchanges of gifts and all of these families coming together if we don't do it 
for the purpose of believing on Jesus Christ. So in other words, when you get together with your family and they come around your table for the Christmas season or gather around the tree for the Christmas holiday, are you talking about Jesus? I certainly hope you are. It is not an indictment, it's just a correction. Because the birth of Jesus Christ, as the scripture says, was on this wise. It was for a purpose. The Holy Spirit conceived into Mary and birthed a human being, put the Spirit of God in that human being. That human being was born to die for you and I. Woo! He became. He became the sacrificial lamb for us. And it, it does him no justice that he was born, he was bruised, he was talked about, he lived on this earth and did many miracles, and he died for the sins of humanity. And we don't recognize it. We're, we're doing everything else but recognizing Jesus Christ. That is not an honor to his name. It is not an honor. And so the perfect gift that you could ever give to someone else is the birth of Jesus Christ. Did he save you? If the Lord has saved you from sin, if he's healing you in your body, if he's delivered you from certain destruction, if the Lord is healing your mind, if he's doing great and marvelous works in your life, Guess what? In telling it, that's the per perfect gift. You sharing that information with someone else and bring someone else to the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ is the perfect gift. You know what I'm really excited about? I was, I was with a, excuse me, a couple. I got a little cold again. I was with a couple uh, down in Richmond the other day, and, uh, and I was counseling this couple, or we call it advising, advising this couple uh, in their prenuptial uh, leading up to their wedding day. And, um, and you know what, I was so excited to hear um, that a man who was there converted. He converted to Christianity. And I was so thankful that he came to the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. It doesn't matter if it was done through me or not. It doesn't matter if, if I was a part of that or not. I'm just glad that he heard the message of the Lord Jesus Christ and he was following the Islamic tradition and he converted to Christianity. He said, I, I accepted the Lord as my personal savior. I believe on Jesus Christ. And I'm telling you, I'm excited. That is so exciting and this is what we need to do we need to be telling all men we need to be telling all men about the lord and jesus about the lord and our savior uh, jesus christ and it and it's similar to uh, go to luke 14 go to luke chapter 14 it's similar to luke chapter 14 it says now when one of those who sat at the table with him heard these things he said to him blessed is he who shall Eat bread in the kingdom of God. Woo -hoo -hoo. Blessed. Not what we do on this earth. He said, blessed is he who shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. What a blessing. We, we are doing so much to save up down here on this earth. We're doing so much to work from day to day to live on this earth. We're buying houses and land. We're doing stuff like we're going to stay here forever. But there's a kingdom coming. Remember, that's what Jesus said, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Let me say that again, Matthew chapter number six, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. There's a kingdom coming. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, you better hear me today. There is a kingdom coming. And he said, blessed is he who shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. Wow. That's what I'm preparing for. That's what I am getting ready for, to eat bread in the kingdom of God. That's why I want to serve Christ. That's why I want to live for him. That's why I know that I am truly saved in the will of God. And I'm going to eat bread. Oh, it don't matter to me what kind of bread it is. <laughs> 
doesn't, it doesn't matter. I'm going to eat and then have my fill in the kingdom of God. He said, then he said to him, a certain man gave a great supper and invited many and sent his servant at, uh, at supper time to say to those who were invited, come for all things are now ready. But they all with one accord began to make excuses. And that's what people are doing. The Lord is bidding you to come to the supper table. The Lord is bidding you to be a part of his kingdom. I don't know who I'm talking to out there, but the Lord has been tugging at your heart. The Lord has been dealing with you to come to his supper table. And you've been making all the kind of excuses that you can make on why you have not come to the Lord yet. Well, you don't want to do that. Because the time will come. Look at what the scripture says in verse number 17. And he sent his servant at supper time to say to those who were invited, come for all things are, are now ready. But they all with one accord began to make excuses. The first said to him, I have, I have bought a piece of ground and I must go and see it. I ask you to have me excused. And another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen and I am going to test them. I ask you to have me excused. Still Another said, I have married a wife, and therefore I cannot come. So that servant came and reported uh, those, these things to his master. Then the master of the house, being angry, said to his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and the lands and the city and, and bring, bring here the poor and the maimed and the lame and the blind. And the, and the servant said, Master, it is done as you have commanded, and still there is room. We're going out there. We're doing our best to reach the loss at any cost. We're trying to reach souls. We're trying to reach those who are in need of the Lord. And I'm telling you, there's still room. The scripture says there's still room for you. This is the reason why we come on this broadcast, is to give you an opportunity to come to the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ, because there is still room. We don't went out. We're gathering and some of, uh, many have excuses on why they haven't come. And then there's some who pretend they're coming, but they're really not coming. But he says, I've gone, Master, I've gone, and I've done you what you've asked, and I've gotten some, but there's still room. He says in verse number 22, And the servant said, Master, it is done as you commanded, and still there is room. Then the master said unto the servant, Go out into the highways and hedges, and compel them to come in, that, the, that my house may be filled. For I say unto you that none of those men who were invited shall taste my supper. Oh, God. Oh, God, that frightens me. The Lord says, I have invited you and you would not come, you won't taste of the master's supper. Come on, don't deny, don't ignore whoever I'm talking to. Let this Christmas be for what it was meant to be. Why don't you make the choice? Why don't you decide right now you are going to come to Jesus? You're going to give your life to the Lord. You have turned, tuned in to this broadcast for a reason. And the Lord is bidding you to come. Come before it's too late. Time is winding up. Come while the master has you in his mind, in his heart. Come while the Lord says that the supper is ready. All things are ready. All you got to do is just come, 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 come before it's too late. Oh, I bid you, I beseech you, I urge you, come before it's too late. Please receive the word as I'm giving it to you today. Put away your devilment. Put away the sin in your life. Put away all the issues. Put away your excuses on why you won't come. And why don't you come? The Lord bids you to come. Hey. That's the only thing I could do is I, I, I plead with you. I, now, now I'm begging. Now I am begging. I don't beg for money, but I will beg you to come to the Lord Jesus. I will beseech you. I will urge you. Come to the Lord while he may be found. Give him your heart. Come on. Come on. Receive his Holy Spirit. Let him 
Do what no man can do. Let him take you where no man has gone before. Why don't you let the Lord do it? Will you? Well, for those of you who have heard my heart, and you say, I believe what the bishop is saying, and I want to give Jesus my life. Well, why don't you pray with me? Why don't you pray with me and just simply, let's go back over into uh, uh, Romans, Romans 10 and 9. Romans uh, 10 and 9. Uh, re matter of fact, uh, yeah, Romans 10 and 9. And then I'm thinking also about uh, Matthew chapter 7. Um, he, he, he says here, he says that if you, if you, well, let's go to uh, verse number 8. But what does this say? The word is near you, even in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of of faith which we preach. Verse number nine, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. All right? That's the promise. That's a promise from the scriptures. You will be saved. All right? So come on, confess with your mouth. Lord, I confess with my mouth. Come on, say it. Lord, I confess with my mouth. Lord, I believe within my heart. Come on, say it. That's it. Come on, you're doing it now. That you are my Savior. I've heard from Bishop Hutnall. I've heard the preached word that you came to this earth to save me from my sins. Now, let's go to Matthew chapter, Matthew chapter number uh, uh, seven. Let's go to Matthew chapter number seven. Uh, he says, in chapter 7, verse number 7, Ask, and it shall, and it will be given, you, given to you. Seeking, ye shall find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receive. And he who seeks, find. And to him who knocks, it will be opened. So all you got to do is ask. Here's, here's the asking. Lord, I've heard of your word. I'm hearing the preached message. Come and save me now. That's all you got to do. Oh, who, who am I talking to? That's all you got to do. Ask him, save me now, Lord. Deliver me from my sins. And watch. And watch because you just asked that of our Father. And you believe within your heart. He's coming to save you. He has come to save you. You are in the family of God. Let him do the rest. Let him pour into your life the Holy Spirit. Let him fill you up with his great hope. Oh, my God. I'm so happy for you because I believe somebody's watching me and somebody asked God to save them. Well, you just did it. He has the responsibility now to deliver you from all of your sins. My God, I'm so happy for you. I'm so excited for you. Your life, it's that simple. You say, somebody, I hear you, I hear you. You say, is it that simple? It's that simple. Follow the scriptures. The scriptures do not lie. If you ask, if you ask for everyone that asketh receives, you've just received the message of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ today. You've just received it, and he's doing it right for you. Okay, so get excited. This is a new territory, new life. You're going into a new year, brand new creature in God, and God is going to do great things for you. All right, now this is what you need to do. My address, our church address is on the screen. It's coming up on the screen. My telephone number is coming up on the screen. Call me. Call that number and, and, and get ready to come to our church, and we're going to show you the more excellent way of Christ. We're going to teach you to walk in the will of God. If you're in prison, if you call me, if you call me or write me, write me a letter, because I know it's challenging for some of y'all to be able to call. But if you're behind bars and you're watching this segment right now, write me a letter and I will come and visit you. I promise you. I will come and visit you and begin to walk with you to the ways of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, I'm so excited. 
I am so excited for this because I know someone out there wants to be saved. You want to be delivered. So our address is on that screen. You can come and visit us at the church and join with a family. If you don't come to mine, go to somebody's church. If, if we're too far away or you're not feeling uh, coming uh, to be with us, but you just heard the message and you want to go somewhere close to home, go to a church. Join with that church family. Be a part of that assemblage. And begin to join the bandwagon with others of reconciling others to Christ. The same way you came to the Lord on today, someone else needs the Lord. The same way you gave God your heart today, someone else. And that's what he said. Go into the hedges and the highways and compel them. My God, who am I talking to? If you believe in what I just did right now, and you're saying, my God, I feel the power of God. I want to join with that preacher. I want to join with the family of God. Then come on, join with us. Help me to reach the lost. Help me to go into the hedges and the highway. Let's get rid of the excuses. I need ministers. I need soul winners. I need missionaries. I need prayer warriors. The church needs it. We need it. We need it. The more that we can get to join, the better the witness, the greater the witness we can be. Amen. I truly believe that. And it's not about numbers. All we need is a faithful few. And the Lord said, where two or three are gathered in my name. He said, I will be in the midst. So I'd never worry about numbers. What I care about is that what we're doing is of faith and we're truly doing it from our hearts. Well, I tell you, my time is gone, but I tell you, I enjoyed this broadcast for doing. And I'm so thankful for the opportunity to come into your home. Listen. Um, once again, if you feel in your heart, uh, the Lord wants you to send a love gift to this broadcast, send it to us. We'll put it to the expense of this broadcast. I'm believing God to go into the new year debt free, debt, especially concerning this broadcast. I want to go into the new year debt free. I want to pay this thing for the whole year. I don't ever want to have to worry about finances as it pertains to this broadcast. So if the Lord has touched your heart and you want to join with me and help me, then you write me and send a love gift. Well, I truly thank you for your time. I am trusting that you're going to have a good Christmas and you're going to enjoy your family and your children and your grandchildren and you're going to have a blessed time in the Lord and above all, you're going to have a prosperous new year. Why? Because you gave your life to the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> to God be the glory for the great things he is doing. I am celebrating you. I'm excited. Why? Because it is our time of restoration. God bless you. See you next week. My prayer.